Hello and welcome to Vox News, a summary of stories from the African continent. Burundi began Monday releasing a quarter of its jail population under a mass presidential pardon. But prisoners' rights groups voiced concern they were just making room for more political inmates. A first group of 300 were released from the Majimpa Central Prison in Bujumbura, but authorities aimed to free some 2,500 of the total, which stood at 10,051 last month. On this memorable day when we officially launched the execution of the presidential pardon by the President of the Republic. Others are young people who were caught committing acts of violence during the insurrectional movement that began on April 26, 2015. I will first thank God who inspired the President to decide to release prisoners. We thank His Excellency, the President of Burundi, for taking the decision to release these prisoners. I think if you can look into the hearts of the people here, you'll see they are very happy. Gambian President Adama Barrow's team announced on Monday his vice president would be a woman who has vowed to prosecute former leader Yaya Jameh and take back assets she says were stolen from the nation. President Barrow, who was sworn in as Gambia's new leader on the 19th of January at his country's embassy in neighbouring Senegal, has put off his return over fears for his safety. As the nation awaits, Mr Barrow's second in command was named as Fatumata Jalo Tambajan. We want democracy, we want to be free like other countries. Because past two, past 22 years, you know, we think that we are we are dictated. I'm not crazy to have this maybe I can be arrested by anybody. Before what I was using was that I have to use it with VPN. But now it has no VPN. And the VPN also consumes a lot of a lot of credit. Commander Kicha Fulwori Sekongo told the press that a lack of protective equipment had hampered the special forces' response to the jihadist attack on the seaside town of Grand Bassam in Ivory Coast in March 2016. The attackers fired on beachgoers in Grand Bassam, about 40 kilometres from the commercial capital of Abidjan. The resort is popular with both locals and foreigners. Four of the dead were Westerners, including a French and a German national. We had expressed needs that were in the process of being fulfilled. But at the moment where the attack took place, not all the equipment in question had arrived. So there was a lack and inadequacy of protective and observational equipment that would have made the job easier. So that meant that assault team were particularly exposed to defensive bullets and grenades used by terrorists. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan arrived in Mozambique today on the latest leg of his Africa visit. Mr Erdogan arrived in the Mozambican capital of Maputo from Tanzania. He also plans to visit Madagascar before returning to Turkey on Wednesday. He's asking governments to crack down on institutions linked to Fethullah Gulen, a Muslim cleric accused of trying to overthrow him last year. Mr Gulen denies being involved in the coup plot. The economy is simply about relationships. The economy is all about friendships. The economy can also be defined as cooperation. Therefore, I am 100% sure this cooperation that exists between us will be fruitful and of help to both our countries to move forward. Turkey is seventh in the world for producing large amounts of agricultural products. In Tanzania, almost 80% of our citizens depend on agriculture as their source of income. So with this visit of President Erdogan and his existing relationship, it will help great opportunities to both of us in our economic development. And I am sure with this existing relationship between us and Turkey, Tanzania will reach the goal of becoming an industrial country and this is due to our counterpart Turkey that has made a great step when it comes to technology. We will be able to learn and copy their technology from them. 
Your Excellency, President Erdogan, I want to assure you that Tanzania is in support of what you and your country have done, and this relationship will continue to exist between our two countries, and you are aware of that. It didn't start recently, but has existed for so long, and this can be proven by our former presidents, who used to have this tendency of visiting each other. Democratic Republic of Congo opposition leader Etienne Tshisekedi has headed to Belgium for medical treatment. According to reports, it comes just as his party is trying to negotiate a power-sharing deal following President Laurent Kabila's failure to step down when his term ended last month. The country's influential Catholic bishops brokered the deal when Mr Tshisekedi was supposed to head a transitional body until elections are held towards the end of this year. What may seem like a typical early education school is not what you would usually expect. Disabled children attend Little Rock Inclusive ECD Centre alongside able children to learn together in hopes to ensure that they are treated as equal members of society and to stop the discrimination. To be able to provide further help for more disabled children, Little Rock have partnered with Able Child Africa as a way to support the children in getting the education that they deserve. The early education school located in Kibera slum in Nairobi, Kenya's capital, hopes that their project will fulfil the dreams of young disabled children who are desperate for support and understanding. The Early Childhood Centre provides a unique education for children ages 0 to 8, where a third are disabled. Founder of Little Rock School says that 140 children have various disabilities out of 1,021 in the school, some of which have gone on to primary and high school. Uh, we are saying when a parent brings a child with disability to Little Rock, they have overcome stigma. So we can't uh, send them away. So we find ways and means to accommodate the children and we, we just work around the children we have received. Little Rock's new partner, Able Child Africa, work with local organisations to help disabled children have a voice in the community. They help them get access to local health services and schools such as this one, where they are able to not only learn together, but also socialise with other children and not be made to feel like they are any different from the others. Inclusive sports are also a, a really powerful tool within the community to see um, for people to see change, so we find when you put when you put on um, big uh, sitting volleyball matches between two particular different schools, you've got you know the whole community coming and watching and seeing oh right well there were these these children that we thought couldn't do very much actually playing together um, and actually achieving um, and so yeah we we definitely see kind of sport as a as a massive vehicle for change. Despite the disability of some of the children at Little Rock, their inabilities do not stop them from joining in on the fun. They're included even in activities such as training with the help and support from teachers. Joseph Mahuli, one of the pupils at Little Rock who was an orphan, was rescued at the age of nine and has come a long way since his arrival. We have uh, rescued him not only well with the education, but he also stays in our rescue house. We have a rescue house where we are taking care of 26 boys and girls. So he's among those children who are rescued and uh, we are taking care. He's under our custody. When Joseph first arrived to the school, he was provided with a wheelchair to help him get around. Through therapy and training, his hands and limbs were trained to help him push himself in the wheelchair. He was also provided with counselling by the school. As Joseph was able to receive an education and be treated fairly, he recommends the same for other disabled children who wish for an opportunity that will help them fulfil their potential. I can tell them to tell the, to tell their parent th that to tell th their parents to bring them to here to school to join with me, and then to write to write with with them, and then and then read with me. It is clear that a child's disability is not a barrier when it comes to education. They can be capable to learn and strive for more with the right help from schools and local organisations such as Little Rock and Able Child Africa. The Kenya Wildlife Service has put in place short and long-term management measures for lion conservation in Nairobi National Park. These range from fence maintenance to active management of the lion population through satellite monitoring amongst other methods. Through other conservation partners, five lions in the park have previously been fitted with satellite radio collars to monitor their movement and location. 
The IFAW has so far donated six satellite collars and 18 camera traps to the Wildlife Service. These equipment will help improve line monitoring and hence better inform management decision making. Kenya is going through a conservation and development balance challenge. Mid last year, actually not just mid last year, from March last year, there was the issue of lions living in Nairobi National Park. And the climax was the shooting of Mohawk, the lion, outside the southern end of uh, the park. KWS approached IFO and said they want to be preemptive, they want to be able to be proactive in terms of the management of the lions of Nairobi National Park. And more so because development is only going to increase, it's not going to get less. And therefore they want to do a lot more active management by coloring more of the lions of Nairobi National Park so that they've got information on their movements and they can preempt actions such as those that resulted in the killing of Mohawk and God forbid the killing of a human being by lions that are living in Nairobi National Park. That's all from Vox News. Until next time, goodbye.